But man, when you open this thing up, you just... <laughs> it just sounds so good. Hey everybody, and welcome to Why Buy. This is part two of the Audi Quattro documentary where we're going to be discussing modern day Quattro systems and which one you should buy. Make no mistake, each generation of the Quattro system, including the ones like Haldex and Quattro with Ultra technology, are very effective at putting power down to the right axle that requires power. I think if you were to drive any of the Quattro systems, you'd be impressed with how it can manage power, putting it to the right wheel where it needs to go at the right time. But not all Quattro systems are the same. Now, when people talk about traditional Quattro systems, what they're generally referring to is longitudinally mounted engines that bolt directly into a transmission that sends power straight to the rear axle. So to better understand the Quattro drive system, let's focus in on the latest generation, Gen 6 of the traditional Quattro system that uses a longitudinally mounted engine bolted straight into a transmission that goes right to the rear axle for a rear bias feel. This traditional Quattro setup is what people typically refer to when they're talking about the torsion differential, or in the RS5's case, it's the crown differential. The Quattro permanent four-wheel drive system has a long tradition stretching back over 30 years. The Quattro four-wheel drive system permanently and optimally distributes the power from the engine to all four wheels. The principle is simple. Just as four brakes provide for better deceleration, four driven wheels provide for better acceleration and greater lateral stability. The new Audi RS5 sees the introduction of the latest generation of Quattro, Quattro with crown gear, center differential, and torque vectoring. The Gen 6 Quattro system that was debuted alongside the RS5 in 2010 was really an improvement of an already great system in the Gen 5. Now, the Gen 5 Quattro system was already really effective, the one in the B7 RS4 and, and multiple other Audis, simply because that system had torque vectoring in addition to all the other advancements. So what really changed was the ability for not just the system sending power to the front or rear axles uh, mechanically, but it could also vector the torque from the outside uh, or inside wheel, depending on if you were cornering, giving you a lot better traction. Despite the advancements in torque vectoring in the Gen 5 system, the B7 RS4 or the other cars that use that Gen 5 Quattro um, had a bad tendency to understeer. And this was mostly due to the fact of where the engine is positioned. So if you open up the hood of most Audis, what you'll find is that the engine is actually, if the axle's here, the engine's actually mounted almost off the nose, putting a lot of weight up front, but that's largely due in part to the transmission tunnel that's bolted right up to the engine. It needs to sit that far forward just for space. 
and even with torque vectoring assisting the rear end giving it a little bit more play and a rear bias feel you still got understeer and that's what they aim to change with the gen 6 quattro system the arrows symbolize the flow of torque or force for example if the wheels on one of the drive axles are unable to transmit the full force the center differential and its differential gears will spring into action. The force will immediately be fed to the axle with the better traction, with zero time lag. Without ESP intervention, this happens with up to 85% to the rear axle and up to 70% to the front axle. With an electronic control system, up to 100% can be fed to a single axle. When pulling away, and when accelerating rapidly, more drive force is fed to the rear axle. The combination of crown gear center differential and torque vectoring on the Audi RS5 provides for precise handling even when cornering. This happens with zero time lag, in accordance with the driver's steering and acceleration commands. dynamic drive force distribution allows excellent exploitation of the traction potential, good track stability, and outstanding agility. In its basic configuration, it's a 60% rear bias feel in the RS5, but what's interesting is that if there's a difference in speed in the front and rear axle, let's say when you're cornering, the crown gear will lock the plate packs for torque, allowing more power to be delivered to either axle. What this feels like when you're driving is immediate power delivery in pretty much any circumstance. So let's say you're taking a corner and you put your foot into it, that torque is being pushed to the front and rear axle equally or with, with as much power as possible to give you the best ability to pull through a corner. That's why it feels like it's glued to the ground. And on top of this, it's something I really dislike with most modern cars is you don't get electronic interference or, or cutting of power to, to try and you know make sure the car doesn't wash out. It's a really good system when you just wanna put your foot into it and it puts the power down. There is no, oh, lame, <laughs> it just goes. It's an incredible feeling because you have zero time lag from when you react or you wanna input into the vehicle, just does what you tell it to do without any you know electronic interventions. It's a really satisfying drive. Right now I'd say the road surface has a bit of that grime and gunk they sprayed to keep ice from forming. The problem with that is is that it's very slick. So what you wind up with is kind of a this sort of loose surface but the Quattro system again keeps it so stable and planted I'm never really worried. What I find interesting with high horsepower cars and I think this is why so many people are enamored with electric vehicles, is not just the torque, but their ability to put power down. And that's what I think is unique about Quattro, is let's say you took a rear-wheel drive with the same amount of horsepower. By the time you got moving from a standstill, it might not be able to put the full power down until you're doing 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour. Otherwise, the wheels would just spin like crazy, so you have traction control and intervention constantly cutting power. But when I've taken people for a ride in this car, even from a dead standstill or a rolling start, as soon as you punch it, all four wheels instantly grab and it just propels the car with a, a thrust that it feels like it has more horsepower. And that's the benefit of traction. And I mean, you're not always doing zero to 60 starts and launching the car all the time. That's not realistic. But you have to think of how that would affect just daily driving and going for road trips, just using the car in real life. It feels good. It just, it feels natural. It's a pleasant driving experience. And I can't stress enough how you're not always paying attention when you're driving. You're not always on full high alert and if something runs out into the road or you need to swerve or whatever it's that confidence that you get that if you have to react quickly 
the system is so fast that it keeps up with your reactions versus electronic systems have a bit of lag that that could mean the difference between an accident or nearly avoiding an accident. And what's more than that, because it's, it's not like you couldn't turn these systems off in some sports cars, but you're putting yourself in danger or at very high risk of a crash because it's a lot of horsepower going down and, and you can easily wash out. With this system, on the other hand, it's instantaneous and in managing the power. So every wheel is giving you the best possible chance for staying in control. When it snows like this, you can't really see the imperfections in the road. And uh, when something catches you off guard, I should say, you know, an improvement from the Gen 5 system is that torque vectoring with the sports differential. So remember I was describing that, you know, inside and outside wheel requiring different power. Well, with this system, you could be taking a corner really fast or just going at, at high speeds and that torque vectoring is keeping the car so incredibly planted and stable so that you know, whether it's the outside or the inside wheel, and not just based on turn, but also based on traction, you get the appropriate amount of power delivery, and it's it's incredible how it feels. You can feel the system working when you're driving that, you know, it's, it's just managing the vehicle's weight and speed effortlessly, because it's a mechanical system, right? So it's just, it's always on, it's always working, and that's, uh, yeah, it's just a totally different experience. And what's kind of weird is, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the case, but the system is engineered to predict what's going to happen. You know, based on driving inputs and, and how much throttle input or how much braking, it's almost anticipating what's gonna happen next. So rarely, if ever, will the car kind of step out of line or do something unpredictable. When I was looking into the history of the, the Quattro system, it started to make sense why cars like the B7 RS4 or the B8 RS5 were used as flagships to help you know, promote new technology. Both of these designs, I think, you know, from a, a generalist perspective are unconventional to promote a brand. One's a sedan, one's a two-door coupe, but it really harkens back to the original Quattro story. You know, you have a two-door coupe competing in rally, then a four-door sedan, and same thing uh, with the road circuits, with IMSA and DTM. It was kind of this, you know, design philosophy of, here's a practical car that's highly capable with a lot of performance. And it doesn't have to look like a supercar. It can be kind of all of these things wrapped in one, uh, one vehicle. In short, these vehicles are designed to show you that it doesn't get any better than this. This is the crowning achievement, our best technology, our best foot forward. You know, here's the package um, that, that best exemplifies that. For example, when Audi set their sights on BMW and that kind of sports coupe that was a, a small compact car, um, the B7 RS4 was kind of used as the poster child for the Gen 5 system, a, a Quattro system that had more of a rear bias feel and it used that Torsen Type C differential to really give the car characteristics that were sort of un Audi like. It, it drove more like a sports car and it still had its issues, but the point is, is that that car is, you know, kind of used as the, the example or demo for this. Total sidebar here, but I am a big fan of the B7 RS4. It's still like my dream car and the car I've always wanted because it just, it, it came out at a time and was as marketed, uh, just it hit at the right time when I was in college and I'm like, man, that car one day, that's four-door sedan with a high-revving V8, 
that's the dream car. And when I was at a, an Audi event in uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, the, um, amount of B7 RS4s that showed up, I was like, wow, it's so well cared for. And one of them in the showroom was just immaculate. absolutely pristine condition and it was a real treat to see that and I, I'd driven a B7 RS4 prior to that and then something interesting happened. It was an Avant, like a wagon RS4 and I'm like, well, whatever. I, it's not like I haven't seen an A4 Avant or an S4 Avant before. And uh, it's mainly due to the fact that um, B7 RS4s in North America never sold in an Avant form, like a, the wagon, only in sedan. So to see one, I, I'd seen before people convert A4, like the base model, into an RS4, which it's not really, but it sort of looks like it. Um, but as I'm looking at this thing in closer detail, I'm like, wait a second, this is the real deal. I think this is the actual car. And I, I talked to the owner a little bit. He showed up and sure enough, imported from Japan. And it's like, you know, he, he's been wanting one forever. And I'm like, can you fire it up? <laughs> and yeah, that car sounds so good. Uh, it was just a real treat to see one in person. You know, that's like the ultimate uh, dream car for me. And th the reason he had had it is the import restriction had been lifted. It's been enough time so that you can get one. So at any rate, uh, really cool to see that. Uh, that, was, that was a treat. Now look, are you sure, because it's a big claim, that this is better than an M3? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's biblically good. Buying a genuine Quattro system, what is the point? Why, why all the fuss? So um, even in the B7 RS4 with the Gen 5 system, there were still issues with understeer. And it, if you don't know what understeer is, it's if you were to be coming into a corner quite quickly and you turned, well, in a rear wheel drive car, your rear end would start to slide out or, you know, depending on the, the weight balance of the car, but that's oversteer where essentially, you know, you're coming into a corner and the butt end of the car follows the corner. Understeer is where you come into the corner and the nose wants to just push through. It doesn't want to turn in, it just keeps sliding. Traditionally speaking, this is a safer way uh, to kind of equip vehicles because if you come in too fast to a corner and the nose starts to push, you hit the brakes and, and the car can be more controlled to come to a stop. But if you're a more experienced driver and you know how to you know, do car control and you have a little bit more you know, uh, skill in that arena, it sort of dampens the experience and it's like, uh, lame. <laughs> so yeah, typically people prefer rear wheel bias cars or rear wheel drive only cars because that's where you get the more rear end play and it's a little bit more fun to drive essentially. Now, this is a common argument that Audi just set to squash with the Gen 6 Quattro system. Now, traditionally, again, they don't necessarily debut a new system, especially alongside a specific car because it usually goes into a line of cars. But this was kind of the first time and I think the only time Audi debuted a new iteration of Quattro in a very specific car the RS5. Not only was this sort of a new show pony for the brand, but it was also illustrating a new design language for the entire lineup. Um, the, the, the actual design of the cars, the body shape, the, the consistency, consistency sorry, throughout the entire product line would have this kind of new shape. What was revolutionary about this new Audi was the crown differential replacing the torsion. The demo videos featured the RS5, you know, and the, the new Quattro system. Uh, There's a lot of commercials and ads. There's one I really like about the, the ugly duckling. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ads. Um, it was just, it was this new car, this new system that was really propelling the brand in uh, kind of the new direction. And um, they also launched, I think there was a, a an Ur Quattro kind of callback, the Audi Quattro they did, but it was basically an RS5 body with some minor, you know, front changes. If you look closely, the cars are actually pretty similar. 
But what was more interesting to me was the fact that this car was going to be coming with a revamped and retooled V8 engine. Because the B7 RS4, that was the car I wanted for that 4.2 liter V8. This one, however, and I don't know this for sure, but people have told me a lot that it was developed in conjunction with Lamborghini's division that made their V10, because at that time VW had owned Lamborghini as well. And apparently this was this new reworked V8, same 4.2 liter displacement, but more reliable. And um, it, just, uh, it just performed so much better. The main difference that I found, I think engineering wise that they did with it was the fact that um, there were kind of these diverter flaps in the manifold in the B7 RS4 with carbon buildup that they would get gunked up, crack off inside the engine, which is a big problem, catastrophic engine failure problem. Uh, but in the RS5, they got rid of those. I don't know, I have to double check that. <laughs> you have a new quattro system that's that's really the the key highlight here the engine kicks ass but uh, in terms of the driving experience does the car have more of a rear bias feel rpm and you feel like you're a better driver and it's just easier to control the car and that's why uh, a lot of people, when they drive these cars, say they feel really fast. It's just effortless. You don't really have to work very hard uh, to go quickly and do it safely. I think one of the things you'll notice right off the bat if you drive this car is the fact that it feels much lighter than it actually is. I said before, like it's 4,000 pounds. This is a heavy car, but it feels so nimble and the steering rack, um, I think this was actually the first car they put an electronic steering rack in, which they might have stolen from Porsche, I'm not sure, but it, it feels great. Like the on-center feel, there's no dead zone and it's adaptive, of course, depending on your drive mode, but the lightness of the car, I think it's uh, largely due to the Quattro system and, and how it can send power and, and move the car around. Uh, it's really quite impressive and in terms of a, a rear bias feel, uh, I've pushed this car eight, nine tenths, and it's it, it stays. You know, the, it keeps its composure. I've only had it step out once. Uh, where uh, when I say step out, what I mean is taking a corner and having the nose push. And I was coming in really hot. <laughs> to like a hairpin, you know, a 90 degree turn. And I started to feel the front end wash a little bit with good tires and uh, that's the only time. And I put on a lot of miles on this car. And I know it's not a true sports car or a race car, but <laughs> it certainly sounds like one and feels like it sometimes. Let's talk about how today Quattro isn't so much a technology anymore as it is a brand. Two systems in particular, Haldex and Quattro with Ultra technology, what does that even mean? <laughs> well, in truth, these are still all-wheel drive systems, but not in the traditional Quattro sense. Typically, you'll find these Quattro systems in cars like the Audi A3, the Audi TT, the Passat, the Golf, and I think the Jetta. And you know, you're probably wondering like what makes Haldex and you know Quattro with Ultra uh, different from traditional uh, Quattro systems. Well, for starters, um, Haldex is a system that was engineered for transverse mounted engines. So instead of going parallel with the car, they're running along the side. And the benefit of developing a you know, all-wheel drive system for an engine mounted this way is that it doesn't have to sit way off the nose. Without the need for that Quattro transmission, 
sitting, you know, right in between the center of the driver and the passenger, it actually alleviated a lot of legroom for the passenger as well, which is why Haldex is used so much in SUVs. And Haldex, as far as I know, is a licensed system uh, that Audi never actually developed. They they put into their cars uh, for a number of reasons, but uh, it's, it's a system that you might find more commonly in other brands. And the way it works isn't very complicated. It's just, uh, it's different from the original Quattro system. So the way Haldex works is you have a transmission system that sits at the front of the vehicle and the rear axle is not being engaged only if a computer tells it to activate. So it's a predominantly front wheel drive system. In other words, you get front wheel activation always first, and then if needed, it sends power to the rear axle. Now I'm just gonna jump ahead and answer the question of Haldex, is it better than traditional Quattro or worse? Well, it's not as good, but that doesn't mean it's bad. First off, traditional Quattro systems, like the one I have in my car, is heavier, it burns more fuel, and it's more expensive to manufacture, driving the, the price of the car up. And when it comes to performance, if you were to compare it to Haldex or Ultra, and I've driven both, I don't know if you would notice a difference between them. Let's say you, you hopped in a vehicle and you didn't know what system it has, and it's slippery and you need all-wheel drive. The system kicks in very well, and it can handle a lot of adverse conditions without breaking a sweat. The nice thing, too, about a Haldex system is the fact that you have less power loss due to the fact that it's a decoupled rear axle, meaning it's, it's not engaged, and when you have power delivery, it's instant, right? It's right to the front wheels. And it's, it's nice with tuning as well because you have a little bit more flexibility in how you can manage the power to the point now where I think with the latest generation, even of Haldex, you can get a module to send more power to the rear differential if you wanted to. Can't do that with a traditional Quattro system. That is mechanical straight to the rear axle and it's, it's kind of, you get what you get, right? The other thing too to take into consideration, especially if it's a daily driver, um, Haldex burns less fuel, right? Because the system's not running and working all the time. It's just powering the front wheels and the rear if it needs to. Um, yeah, you can save more on just you know commuting and, and daily driving. And to put it in perspective, Haldex is used in quite a few performance Rensport or RS cars from Audi. The TTRS. <laughs> the RS3, and even the R8, uh, the new generation of the R8 uses a Haldex system that's flipped backwards. So instead of being front wheel drive first, it's rear wheel drive, and then it's got an electronic differential at the front. If it tells it it needs power, it sends power to the front wheels, but it's a very capable system. And the thing is, for most daily driving applications, it, it's no wonder why Haldex is used in so many different vehicles. But no bullshit, I've driven both systems, and if I had to say which one I enjoy driving more, well... <laughs> so I'm driving a 2018 Audi RS3. So it has the uh, Haldex system in it, and uh, quite frankly, I find it very responsive when it comes to being able down to put the power down. I do notice that there is a little bit of understeer um, with the vehicle. With that being said, I think it's just because it does lean more to a more front biased power weight to ratio. So it's, it's a little different when you're just driving normally. Uh, you can feel a pull when you take off in a launch control situation. You feel a push from the back end, like the back end is engaged right away. Driving in the winter time, uh, you're really missing out if you if you put a car away like this and don't at least get out a couple days in the winter. My favorite thing is the launch control. I can never get enough of just being able to sit at a red light and build some boost and see that boost meter beep and just release it. And just with that alone, it's so easy, like just putting your foot down to the gas, holding the brake down, and letting go of the brake and right there and then you have instant power that's, that's taking you places. When you drive Haldex, um, if, if you know cars and you, you know, you're, you're used to experiencing a front wheel drive, you'll notice it right away. You know, especially under acceleration, you do feel the pull of the front wheel drive like you would a, a front wheel drive car. It, it has that kind of sensation and acceleration. 
and the traditional Quattro system, particularly the Gen 6, you know that it's rear wheel drive. You, you, you feel that it's, it's the same kind of driving characteristics. And to put it simply, the traditional Quattro system is immediate and proactive. So there's no lag, there's no you know, power loss or inter things interfering with your driving experience. It's like, boom, it goes. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, I think, more gratifying when you want instant power delivery. And when I say like instant power delivery, it's, it's the way the power is delivered. There's definitely a nicer sensation for torque and how it rotates around corners. The car definitely feels more like a, I don't know, it's to me a driving style that I prefer more. And uh, cause I, I had a front wheel drive prior to, you know, having a, the RS5 and the way you corner, the way you come into corners and scrub speed, it, it's very different. And I just prefer the traditional Quattro system. You can see the S4 wheels are spinning all four together and the TT wheels are alternating front, rear, front, rear. The other thing that's really nice about the traditional Quattro setup or the Gen 6 that I've been driving is engine braking. So when you come into a corner, let's say, um, you, you know, you'd brush your brakes or, you know, brake and then accelerate out through the corner. Well, with engine braking, much like a motorcycle or a race car, you can downshift and that will slow the car down. You don't have to go near your brakes if you don't want to. Because the way the torque vectoring system works, especially you're, you're slowing down each of the four wheels. So it's, it's really bringing the entire car, um, you know, to a, a slower speed rather than just one wheel where you might get wheel hop or this kind of weird skipping or, or skidding effect. It's really effective at giving you control of the car using the mechanical systems and, and not even going near the brakes. And I love that because the brakes on this car are super expensive. And again, I, I've said it before, but this traditional system, you know, without the electronic interventions, mechanically speaking, it's instantaneous and you feel it. Like it does not have to spend time working out or thinking of, you know, where should torque and, and power be put down to what wheel. It's just always on, it's always ready and it's, you know, it's very reactive to any situation. You put your foot into it, it goes. You, it senses a slip, it deals with it. Like it's, it's a really impressive system. And not that I want to get into like nickel and diming buying these cars and like, oh, how can you, you know, really save money? But the, the truth is, is that it is less expensive to service as well. The service intervals that the traditional Quattro system calls for versus Ultra or the Haldex is less frequent. Not that I'm suggesting you follow that. I always service my car early anyways, but you know, it's, it's kind of you know, penny pinching at that point. Um, the, the thing to take away from the two different systems in terms of cost is the upfront cost. Because if you buy a car with a traditional Quattro system, you will be paying more because even new, the cars cost more because the system is just more expensive to manufacture and, and put in the vehicle. things that uh, I really encourage you to do is drive these in the snow. Now I've driven all sorts of trucks, vans, SUVs, cars with different 4x4 all-wheel drive systems and uh, when you drive a Quattro system in the snow um First time I drove it in the winter, I just kind of like I chuckled and I muttered to myself like, "Oh, I get it." <laughs> these drivetrains, the, like these cars, they love the snow. It, it feels like a, a video game rally car. It just it feels right at home in these conditions. Like it was purpose built for it. You know, you'll be driving sensibly, maybe go near the throttle a bit, and then it, the rear end wants to play, but you can just feel the front end clawing at in front of you. You maintain momentum, you hold your line, 
it, it's such a confidence inspiring drive and it just it does what you want it to do and you, you have the power that is uninterrupted. It's being put down and it's just pushing through the conditions, whether it's ice, slush, deep snow, the, the, the system just reacts how you would expect it to react and it just makes you feel much more confident when you're driving. I think if it weren't for Audi, it, it's not that we wouldn't see all-wheel drive systems. Eventually, they would have happened, you know, uh, just because it, it makes more logical sense for most everyday driver cars. But I think what they did was change the pers um, perception around how people viewed sports cars in particular, um, because it's not even so much that it's faster or more capable on wet, on you know, dry or snowy conditions or whatever. It's it's the fact that you can drive the cars year round. You know, the the notion that you could have a car that it doesn't matter what's going on outside. You put on a good set of tires for whatever the condition, you're good to go. And that's the kind of mentality I think that changed you know, car buying behavior, or at least what enthusiasts would want out of their sports cars. Their dedication and commitment to the racing and to delivering high quality products, these sort of all-in-one package cars, I think really changed the automotive industry. It forced other competitors to start doing the same. Uh, it encouraged other brands to make you know products at the same caliber that it just, all this competition is, is good for the end user, for, for the people who buy these cars like you and me. And yeah, a lot of credit goes to you know that team and the race drivers and the, the people who risked what they did to achieve what they did I think will will forever be remembered in history, and it's a good story because uh, you know cars, motorsport, it's it's something that I think everyone can relate to, and it's uh, yeah something that is meaningful and, and and worth talking about. And yeah, there's that side of the business where they're making cars to make money. They're making products so that people buy them and they can keep doing what they're doing. But as a consequence of the business side, what we get to witness is spectacular racing. Um, we get access to buy very unique and, and novel products. And I really do think I was fortunate to have stumbled across the car that I bought and got it when I did because it's sort of a moment in time car, right? You have this naturally aspirated high revving V8 paired with this the latest iteration of a, a quattro system that is, you know, harkening back to the 80s when the system was developed. It's you're kind of getting all of these great things in one package and getting to an experience that now is, is really quite special. So, yeah, if you're looking at Audis or, or whatever, just, you know, buy one. And I, I know I didn't cover all of the generations of Audi quattro systems and which vehicles they're in, um, but if my advice is worth anything, try and find a, a traditional Quattro system, a Gen 4, Gen 5, or Gen 6, because they really are something spectacular, especially for year-round uh, driving. It's, it's, it's quite a lot of fun. And yeah, uh, if not, if you just like cars and it's an interesting, this story is just interesting. It's, <laughs> I, I almost find it ironic that you know, again, even my own perception, here's this underdog coming into these races, but really they're like, <laughs> we have unlimited resources, we're gonna come in and destroy you. <laughs> and they did, you know, that's that's the craziest part is, you know, they, in a very short amount of time, developed something really high tech, really fast, and accomplished what they set out to do. And that's, you know, create a legend, and that's Quattro. So if you thought this video was helpful, uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.
to come back. <laughs> I'll tell people I know and they won't believe me. so hard I put the windows down in the car and I drove around town with my stereo speakers cranked as loud as they could go and you know this little Honda Fit pulls up with this roaring V8 engine and it lasted all about five minutes before for whatever reason the transmitter just sent out a signal that was like red line you know 7,000 rpm ah! <laughs> and it just stayed at that and it sounded pretty bad you know whether or not you guys can relate to that I don't care it's just kind of a personal story of mine that I, I spent years wanting to have a V8 engine sound in my car and you know you, you go through all sorts of uh, moments of desperation and uh, yeah make no mistake I, I never forget how fortunate I am to have not just a V8 in my car but to have this specific v8 in my car it really is special it's it's just one of those one-of-a-kind engines it just has that race car quality 